Gaktila, guys. This is Josh, and today we are going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, aerodynamics. Aerodyn... Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want to do that. Aerodynam... Aerodynamics. Now. Ah, oh, god damn it. Now. Okay. Aerodynamics. Now, this is one of my favorite subjects. It's very exciting. There's a lot of cool stuff involved here, and we're going to talk about all of it. All of it, I tell you. All of it. Now, this is going to be like a little mini-series that I have. I'm going to basically go through everything that I've learned in aerodynamics. It's not too advanced, but it's not simple either. Like, It's going to be like at a, like an undergraduate level. So whether you're taking this as a class or you just want to learn for fun, I'm your guy. And I'm not going to bullshit anything. This is going to be just like raw, real talking. It's not going to be like a professor that talks very formal. I'm a student. Come on. So let's do it. What are some of the basic uh, requirements that we need to study aerodynamics? And if you, like, if you know that if you have these requirements, then continue. But if you don't, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. Why well, we got to waste time for each other? So what are requirements? Well, you definitely need some calculus. That's like one of them. Exclamation point, exclamation point. All right, let's give it one more. Calculus is a must. Calculus is what defines things, what gives us rates of change. We, we need calculus, OK? Um, and some basic physics also, like maybe like mechanics. That's about it. And just very basic mechanics. Like you don't really like, like F equals MA. That's all you got to know basically because the rest I'm just going to teach as we go and I, I assume that you have no prior knowledge I assume that you don't know that apples fall down I, I don't assume anything because we're all from different backgrounds here right and I mean we need a little bit of thermodynamics too just a little bit and honestly I'm just going to put this in parentheses because all the thermodynamics you need I'm going to teach you also so you honestly don't need it, but if you have a little bit of thermal knowledge, it's gonna go, it's gonna be good for you in the long run. This is aerodynamics. Welcome, welcome. So, what is aerodynamics? Firstly, let me get a nice little color here. Perfect. What is aerodynamics? What's aerodynamics? Well. Let's be smart here and let's break up this word real quick. We got arrow and we got dynamics. So arrow, this is air, 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 and air is a fluid. So a large part of our study of aerodynamics is also a study of fluid mechanics, fluid dynamics, and that's a really big, it's a really big subject. So we're going to cover a lot of material here, but air is a fluid. And this is like not to distinguish this from something like gas dynamics, which is a completely different thing. But they have similar qualities. And dynamics, as you probably could guess, is like the... Well, it's actually... A lot of people don't know how to define dynamics, but I'll give you a nice definition here. Time evolution. So dynamics is going to be the time evolution of a system. And this might sound like pretty vague to you, but just hear me out. Let's say I have a ball and I kick it. The dynamics of the ball will be the time evolution of the system. And the system is the ball in this case. And the time evolution of different quantities, like its position, its velocity, its acceleration of the ball, all things like that. It's going to be the time evolution. If our, if our ball would just stand on the ground, lay on the ground, I mean, can't really stand up a ball. If, if our ball would just stand, if our ball would just lay on the ground, it would be a static problem and not a dynamic problem. Okay, so it's just very basic aerodynamics, and th don't confuse this with subjects like hydrodynamics, which is also a subset of fluid dynamics. But this is water or a f any type of um, fluids, liquids. Okay, liquids here, and then we also have gas dynamics which is its own, its own thing. And they're all interesting, but gas dynamics, you want to learn this if you're studying like propulsion or something, right? Because you have these combustion processes going on and things like that. And it's just, we're, we're, we're dealing with aerodynamics here. 
Okay. Now, now that you know what aerodynamics is, how are we going to learn it? Like seriously, we can't just start off by talking about the the flow of air over a three-dimensional wing, uh, calculating its tip vortices, calculating its lift coefficient. We can't start off with all this mumbo jumbo. We got to start really basic. And when I mean basic, I mean like really, really, really basic. Okay. So the way to do this is the way to talk about aerodynamics is we need to know the type of flow that we're talking about. So I'm going to write here type of flow. You notice that color changes. It's crispy, isn't it? So types of flow. Um, there are many different types of flow, and before I do that, I want to introduce you to your best friend, and that is the Mach number, or Mach number. I don't know how the hell you say it. So Mach number. And the Mach number is M, and it's going to be defined as, you see, when there's three of them, three of these uh, lines is going to be called defined to be, defined as. When there's, a e like when there's only two of them, it's an equal sign. So the Mach number is defined to be your speed, or your velocity, the magnitude of it, your uh, speed, divided by your the speed of sound. This is very important. I'm going to box this bad boy. So the Mach number is your speed divided by your divided by the speed of sound. And let me just give you an example of this. Like for example, Mach equals one. Mach number equals one. This corresponds to flying at the speed of sound. Very basic stuff. Very basic. Mach number equals two. You're flying twice the speed of sound. M equals 0.5. You're flying half the speed of sound. Okay. Very simple. But this is an extremely important um, thing we need. The Mach number. And now we can get to the types of flow. So let me get a new color here. Number one. We're going to start off very basic here. The first type of flow we're going to consider is what is called an incompressible flow. Incompressible flow. An incompressible flow is when our Mach number, so let me draw an arrow here, our Mach number is less than approximately 0.3. And an incompressible flow, there's this fact that the density is a constant. So the air density is going to be a constant. And density, you know, is just, it's just the, um, its, it's units are newtons per meter cubed, and it's the amount of force per volume. So you see, newtons is force, and meters cubed is volume, so it's going to be the amount of how, how dense the force is, the newtons per meters cubed. All right, um, yeah, so incompressible flow is when you have Mach number less than 0.3. So this is like very, very slow. Like you can always almost think of the flow over a car to be incompressible because cars don't really go that fast, right? Or just like a, a plane when it's about to take off, incompressible flow. And it's going to be really important as our first stepping stone to what is called, incom called compressible flow. That's the second thing we're going to talk about here. Compressible flow. And you notice that it has these two both have the word compressible in it. And this has to do with the compressibility of air. And you're probably like, what the hell is that? We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Don't worry. So compressible flow is usually, well, not usually, it is, flows greater than 0.3, but probably less than, well, it just flows greater than 0.3. And we have another subset. Here we actually have three subsets. We have subsonic flow. And sonic, you can tell, is denotes is related to the speed of sound. So you have subsonic, you have transonic, so you better break the speed of sound, and you have supersonic, which was which is when you're already past the speed of sound. So um, subsonic is when you're between like 0.3 and 0.8, something like that. Transonic, you're hovering around the the speed of sound regime, so you're probably on between 0.8 and 1. And then supersonic, of course, you're greater than point, you're greater than one. You're breaking the sound barrier. And with, with these, there's a lot of interesting things that go on, especially super the transition between the subsonic and supersonic, because 
you get these things called shocks. You have normal shocks, oblique shocks, bow shocks. You have all these type of different types of shocks. And there's a specific reason why these shocks happen. We're going to talk about it. Oh, and one more thing I'm going to mention, and it's been like the topic of recent research, is what is known as hypersonic flow. And this is like Mach number greater than 5 or 6. And this is like really fast. Like, I don't even know. I can't even explain to you how fast. And this has been the current um, study in like, they want to make military uh, military aircrafts that go at supersonic, supersonic uh, speeds. So military aircrafts. And I don't know, why did they do this? Well, there's a reason, and we're going to talk about it. So here we go. We got three different types of flows. And one more other thing that we have to take into account is number three, is <coughs> friction. Now, friction is very, very important. So here, we're going to talk about viscous flows. And viscous just means that there are frictional forces present. And also, if, when there are no frictional forces present, this is called inviscid flow. So it's like the opposite of that, inviscid flow. Okay, and why, why are, so I'm just going to write friction here. Friction. And friction is bad, bad, bad. We don't like friction. Friction complicates everything like crazy that you can't even imagine. And, <clears throat> okay, so why do we want to talk about friction? Well, let me move over here real quick. So imagine I have like, um, imagine I have a wing here. So like an airplane wing. I'm a really bad drawer, by the way, so just be prepared. And let's say this wing, okay, so this is just like a wing over here. And let's say we take, and this is a three-dimensional wing, so you try to imagine it has like some kind of depth to it. So if I want to take like a cut of this wing, okay, and let's say the wing has a profile like this, like a, the, the cross-section of the wing, maybe it can look something like this. On maybe over here, it looks something like that. Maybe over here, it looks something like that. Here, it looks something like that. It's just a two-dimensional cross-section of the wing. If I cut this thing like in half and I look at it, from the side, this is the cross section of it. And the cross section has a specific name. It's called a, so the two dimensional cross section of a wing. This is very important, that's why I'm writing it down. It's called an airfoil. Okay, and I'm gonna be using this term a lot in our future like work. So it's very important that you make sure you know what this is. So airfoil. So let me just draw a guy real our airfoil over here real quick. Maybe it looks something like that. Oh shit. Maybe it looks something like this. So yeah, this, this is like a typical airfoil. This is called the leading edge. This is called the trailing edge, like leading and trailing. And this distance from the leading edge to the trailing edge over here. Ooh, I drew that so bad. This is distance from the leading edge to the trailing edge. It's called the chord, and usually we write it by C. So C is the chord. So you can imagine what is, what is happening here. Let me pick a nice color for air. This air is very special, right? So let's say air is flowing like this. Maybe it flows like that, flows like that. Maybe over here, the air stops. It's called a stagnation point. I'm going to talk about it later. Oh, maybe it flows like this. Maybe like this. Well, you, you, you understand, right? So the air is flowing around this body and here we're gonna write um, air perfect so yeah when we have an airfoil or any object like maybe we have a ball air is gonna flow around it and because of the flow of air around this body is gonna create some force on it like lift or even maybe drag which is something else that we're gonna talk about and how do these forces happen? Well, it's pretty simple actually. Okay, so imagine this real quick. Imagine we have like a, like maybe like a flat plate, maybe a square plate here. And we have air, like imagine this is like a three dimensional plate and we have air flowing over here. Like some of it is gonna go above it. A lot of it is gonna go above it actually. Some might go below it too. Some might go around it. Some might go around it, etc., etc., right? And the the forces that are going to be on this plate results from two types of stresses, okay? 
So 1 and 2. And of course this is air. And the air contact with the surface is what's going to produce these stresses. So we have two types of stresses here. We have one that is called, let me draw like this. This stress is perpendicular. Kind of see that? It's perpendicular to this um, area. And it is known as pressure. So the first one is pressure. And these are both stresses. So that's very important. And stresses is nothing but a force per an area. So newtons per meter squared. And then the second, um, the second stress is going to be from the contact with the um, actual, like the, like the shearing force. And it's going to come from this, um, it's called a shear stress. And you can imagine this is like when you're rubbing your hands together, your hands are shearing each other. They're rubbing each other. So that's where that um, frictional, I and mean, your hands is frictional, but that's where that stress comes from. A better example would be, if you look up top over here, is if I have like a, I'm going to draw it three-dimensionally, like a little block here. And, okay. And like, it, let's say we have a force, I mean a stress like this shearing the top of the block. So here is our shear force. And it could be on the side of the block too, like this. Or maybe like this. Or, well, I don't know, maybe like this. But you get the point. It's it's like rubbing off it. However, the, um, the pressure sh stress is always going to be perpendicular to it. Like that. Or like that. Or like that. You know. Okay, you get it. So, we have two different stresses. Pressure, which is perpendicular, and this is the sign for perpendicular, and shear stress, which is going to be parallel. Okay, pretty basic. And because of these stresses, these two types of stresses, we get this lift and we get this drag on the airplane. Because lift is nothing but a combination of these pressures and um, shear stresses integrated over the whole um, body. Okay. So there we go. In the next video, we're going to start talking about, we're going to start talking about aerodynamics. But before we do that, we need to talk about, we need a little like, um, a, like a toolkit to study it because we can't just talk about it without any like knowledge of <clears throat> any of the inner workings. Like we need to know things like circulation. We need to know things like vorticity, all that good stuff. Like a good example, like an analogy that I would say is, if you have like a plumber going to someone's house to fix the plumbing, he's not going to go there with no, none of his um, tools in hand. He's not going to go there empty handed because then he has nothing to work with. You know, he might understand everything about plumbing, about everything, how it works, but without the actual tools, he's not going to be able to do anything. So it's the same thing here, except our, our tools are all mathematical, but the, the same concept applies. We need all these tools. We need this toolkit that we use and we apply it in different situations. And from there, we're going to understand aerodynamics. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. See you there.